are things like you could read into the types of the health problems or the areas of the body yeah. or something even yeah okay very yeah, cool definitely. yeah so, all right so do you want to like show some examples and stuff through yeah, yeah. um okay I love this chart. This is such a great chart to give an all example. Right. Oh, well, all of them are, but this is just so awesome. It shows it so clearly. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is Serena Williams. All right. Uh, this is the year she won Wimbledon, and she got ranked number one. She beat her sister Venus. Okay. She, she made a huge jump, okay, okay, in her career and her status. So... So this year, um, she has Mars in exalted in the ascendant and in the month. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and her ascendant Lord is in the sixth house of beating your enemies. Ah, okay. Gotcha. The sixth house of enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and those competitors, all of our competitors are considered our enemies. To, you know, um, even people at work, our coworkers, if we're competing for, you know, a, a, um, a promotion, that's going to be sixth house stuff. It's Wait, did you say Mars was the year lord in this or no? Yes, Mars, yeah, Mars is the year lord. Okay, right. So I read it somewhere in your PDF earlier today, I believe that it said if Mars is strong, one defeats their enemies. And then if yes. Mars is weak, one gets over, overrun by enemies. And that's just a general truth of astrology too, you guys, right? I mean, like the stronger, right. I didn't know that for so long, but the stronger your Mars is, it doesn't mean like you have worse, stronger enemies. It means you deal with enemies mm -hmm. better and you actually end up having less people threaten you usually. And then a weaker Mars is kind of always, you know, just a little insect is like an enemy to someone like that. So, okay. Exactly. All right. exactly. Um, and, the, and the fun thing is, okay, she's got it exalted in, in the ascendant. Um, so that's going to give her extremely strong athletic prowess, right? Um, right. But the interesting thing here is whenever you have the muntha in the ascendant, and I'm talking about the Varshafal ascendant, mm -hmm. whenever the muntha falls in the Varshafal ascendant, the person changes their life in some way that their status changes the way okay. the world sees them changes you know because it's yeah. the ascendant. there's some yeah. change it's like an eighth house thing it's almost like an eighth house thing so th that's exactly what happened she changed her status she went from she went to the number one tennis player in the world yes. so um so that always happens when you have the mantha in the varshapal ascendant which is a good little rule to know and you know but, uh Tennis is such a, uh, a sport of the arms, so it's kind of cool that Mars rules the arms and is the year lord, and then Saturn is in the sign of arms, like Gemini. Right, <laughs> Gemini, exactly. That's exactly, of... totally. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so this is an interesting one, too. Uh, Steve Jobs. Right, this, okay. This is the year he went from being, like, a millionaire to a mega millionaire. Not quite a billionaire, but he's 24 years old. He goes from 1 million to 250 million. That's what he was worth. Wow. Okay. Jupiter is the year lord. Gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jupiter's the year lord, Expansion. and the, month, the montha is Virgo. Oh, and it's in the second house of money. Yeah, it's in the second house of worth and value and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, oh, wow. but see that, that Jupiter is so, is really strong and you would think that, um, you know, Saturn and Rahu and the Muntha is, uh, going to be detrimental, but that's not true. The reason is whenever you have the month, the Lord, oh, this is another really cool rule. This is another little trick, um, mm -hmm. that you can do just like with the other stuff I was talking about. Mm -hmm. It's really important that you do this or you will miss something again. When you have, okay, so you've got the mantha, and the mantha, all it is, it's the progressed ascendant. So it's always the same degree every year. It's the degree of your ascendant, just in a different sign. Right. So if you have the mantha lord aspecting the mantha, 
So in this case, Mercury is directly aspecting the month up. Oh, gotcha. That, yeah. Okay. That's going to be a really um, important, strong year. That's right. Gonna be I remember big. writing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, it's going to have a, a lot to say about um, how well the year goes and what will happen during the year, even if nothing else. Okay. Even if there is nothing else pointing in that direction, mm -hmm. um, but you have a strong aspect, and this is over 40 points, aspecting to over 40 points of that month of Lord, aspecting that month of, that is really going to produce something. So um, that there's something, you know, your highlighted planet of that year is doing something with its zone. It's going to make an, something will happen, I guess is the right. idea. Right, exactly. And Steve Jobs was business. He was an entrepreneur. You know, I mean, that's what he's right. known for. And you know, the Saturn Rahu might indicate the technology uh, or the the internet and the this new right. pioneering yeah, technology. Uh, technology. Yep. Okay. Very cool. And, and I um, just want to point out, though, I just yeah. want to point out, I didn't write it in the PDF. You can't uh -huh. see it there. Um, Steve Jobs during this year. Mercury is the strongest planet aspecting the month. It's aspecting the month to 52 points. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that, that matters. Yeah. The, the planet, the, the strongest aspect to the month that matters. Um, okay. Very much. Very, very much. Um, even if there's nothing else, you know, it's, if the month of Lord is aspecting that month, that's going to be a good year. Okay. In, in this case, you know, um, Mercury mercury is the planet of manifestation mm -hmm. so um it was aspecting that second house of wealth and boom it manifested all of this wealth for him and you know mercury also deals with yeah like like rahu and virgo and mercury we could see that relating to computers and technology and communications Definitely. and information um <clears throat> making money through information stuff <clears throat> yeah exactly um and um, yeah, it's really easy to see. You have to, you have to look at those things. You've got to look at that. People often forget about that, but you really have to look at that to see that the aspects to the month. Of, and then also you have to look at that chart from that natal ascendant. That's also really important. Sometimes people forget that. So yeah, huh? Um, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, those are. Yeah. So wait, what was? Do you know Steve Jobs' ascendant? I think it's Pisces, maybe, but I can't remember. What's oh yeah, he's, um, he is. Uh, no, he's a Virgo. He's okay. a Virgo. Oh yeah. yeah, okay, that probably makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a Pisces Sun. So. Uh, okay, so then, yeah, so like he, he, we need to read his chart and like know the promise of what his chart says, and then we wouldn't be so scared when we see maybe the Rahu and Saturn in the second because we can see a lot of probably strong wealth yogas in Steve Jobs chart if we looked at it more, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. You know, he's got, he's got his, um, all his angle Lords in Artha houses. So, you know, he's got, he's got Mercury, which is his first and 10th Lord in the sixth and Jupiter in the 11th mm. exalted, exalted. So, Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, um, so he's concentrating on building wealth. It's a wealth lifetime for him, or it was. So, um, yeah. so yeah, you could be able to see that for sure. Oh, yeah, I and, remember seeing this, that Princess Diana example, I think. Sorry, what, what's the next example you want to do? Oh, yeah, let's do Princess Diana. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there's certain places. Um, can you see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's certain places where where the month up um falls that year where which will cause um some some stress and it's not all it's not always you know they say the eighth is the worst but that's not always the case because um the if the month uh, wherever the month is yeah that's going to be a focus of life and it can cause some stress but the more important things are to see how strong that your Lord is, if the Lord of the Mantha is aspecting the Mantha, you know, otherwise, if you have some good yogas, that will completely override whatever stress 
um, you know, mm -hmm. the eighth house will bring or the 12th house. Okay. Um, but in this chart, that wasn't the case. <laughs> so they say, okay, the month is in the fourth house for Princess Diana, age 35. This is the year she finally had her divorce finalized mm -hmm. and she had a couple of her titles taken away. Oh, okay. And, um, and she, there was just so much controversy. But this was yeah. not the year that she died or anything in that. No, I put that in here though, too. Okay, I think cool. All right, I was just curious because that's like, yeah, anyways, keep going. But, um, and so this was a stressful year for her. Mm -hmm. And it actually says in Neela Kanthi, it says that if the mantha is the, in the fourth house, the person becomes a subject of controversy. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Um, she, uh, she became a subject of controversy. It was a huge deal then, you know, to Weird. get a divorce. I would not, I would never, I would wonder why. Oh yeah, I see it right there on the fourth house. I would never, I wouldn't think of the fourth house as causing one, causing that to happen, you know? Yeah, there it is. See? Ill health. And that's that. exactly what happened to her. So, um, and um, another thing, and another little, you know, rule is that when the month is the fourth house, Sometimes the person, a lot of the times, I would say 80% of the time, the person moves. Okay, gotcha. That makes if, sense. If they don't move, they change something in their home. Um, you know, they do renovations or, or whatever. But so that that's be why it's a stressful, it's a stressful place for the month to be, the fourth house. Gotcha. And you wouldn't think so because... You know, it's an angle, but but it is. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess in that sense, I can see it because it's like your fourth house is like the thing that makes you happy and what you like. So you don't really want any change going on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. so that month that can show yeah. that there's a highlight of activity there, which could generally mean a lot of shakeups maybe or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. There's um, a, we have a lot of examples in here. Yeah, this is uh, this is a sixth house month, um, and uh, I didn't write it in here, but it is. This is sixth house month, and this is she got almost died from pneumonia. This is Elizabeth Taylor. She had really bad health issues anyway. You know, she was oh. always sick. There was always something going on with her. But um, but this is uh, you know, a pretty the month is um kind of rough. It, yeah. The month is the sixth house and that you are going to have health problems. If the month debilitated is Mars and debilitated Jupiter. So it's like a low year kind of like, and that yeah. makes sense because then if it's like your birthday is that time, well, that year you're going to have that debilitated Jupiter that year. So it's a lower year for a lot of people. So it makes sense for your karma to trigger stuff that year. And huh? Yeah. yeah. I can see how that works. Yeah, she had her ascendant is ruled by Jupiter for this year. She has a Sag ascendant and it's mm -hmm. debilitated with Saturn. So, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, her body. Oh, tracheotomy, what is that? When they cut here so you can yeah, breathe. Yeah, the second house is the throat, right? That's why yeah. I thought of that. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. And Taurus is the throat and Taurus is the mantha. Ah, oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, that. Um, that completely adds up. Yeah, that's, wow, interesting. Um, and, oh, what was I going to say? There's something else. I was gonna, oh, okay, so this is another big question I get from people is, um, well, what about if I move, you know? Um, what about if I go somewhere else? Well, will that change it? Because my ascendant will be somewhere else. And that's why I tell people, never do it for where you live. Always do it for where you were born. Okay. Always do the, the calculate that chart for, for your birthplace. I was under the impression that's how everyone did it, but there, is there other systems that do it differently? Yes. Okay. Yes, there are. Um, some people want to calculate from where they live currently. And I, don't, I do not recommend that at all because all you would have to do is move somewhere and your, your karma is going to completely change. Yeah, that almost implies that like karma isn't karma. It's just, oh, you're just a loser because you didn't leave your hometown <laughs> or something like <laughs> yeah. or, I mean, or like that would almost imply that because then, you know, your karma is entwined in you moving as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that, I see what you mean. But you can't do that. You know, you, you just can't change your karma and go it's move somewhere. Easy. Yeah. 
like everything's going to completely change. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, um, that's like an escapist kind of idea, I guess. Yeah, and it will change your mindset. You know, there, there's that whole relocation astrology. And I do think that helps, you know, going to a different place and maybe that'll give you more inspiration, but it's not going to completely change your life. You know, it's not going to, yeah. If you were meant to go there, you're going to go there, right? Yeah. You know, it's no, to go I, there, agree. So. I agree. And it's, it's like, uh, even that move would be shown in your chart too, probably on some level or something. So, I don't know. right. Exactly. Um, okay. So, this is another kind of stressful place for the month to fall in is the seventh house. Okay. Um, and when the month is in the seventh house, it means you're trying to change yourself for your partner. Okay. You're, um, so what connects you this year to your birth chart, which is the month is all centered around relationships. So you're trying to adapt yourself and change yourself for somebody else. And that is stressful. Gotcha. And it, it's not really that, um, it doesn't indicate fair weather. It, it doesn't, it, it's not a good place for the month to be. It's another um, kind of stressful place. Of course, you've got to weigh in everything. You've got to weigh in, you know, the year of Lord and, and the month of Lord and all those other things. But, um, so but, you can expect to see, yeah, divorce or, or contentious court battles when celebrities have a seventh house month uh, because they're going to be in the public eye and have a lot of, yeah, ups and downs. and Yeah, definitely. It doesn't mean if the month is the seventh, it doesn't always mean you break up. It just, it means there's going to be some stress around relationships. How, to see how bad it is, you have to look at everything else. Like mm -hmm. in this chart, okay, this is the chart Brad Pitt they were breaking up. She wanted to take the kids away from him. She uh, had the FBI investigate him for child abuse. Um, just a whole big mess, right? In this chart, the ascendant Lord for him is Mars and for her is Venus. His seventh house is ruled by Venus. Mm -hmm. They're enemies here gotcha. together. Okay, open the and house. Open. They're in oh. inimical relationship. So that they're fighting, you know? Um, and also whenever I see Mars and Venus together anyway, I always predict there's some contention. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but yeah, this doesn't, this is not that great of a chart, <laughs> so, uh, you know, for relationship issues. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. They're in that, <clears throat> that openly en enemy placement. Yeah. Oh, yes. and then he has K2 in the fifth. Okay, now what about the nodes? Because I know a lot of the Tajika system doesn't even really talk about the nodes, but no. certainly they are important. And so, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on using the nodes when it comes to this system? When I use the nodes, I use, I do use them. I, it shows um, during the year what part of life you're trying to develop, which okay. is Rahu. Wherever okay. Rahu is, you're, you're trying to develop that, that house. So in his case, this is the 11th. Um, and then K2, you know, you're trying to perfect it. You're trying to, you're moving away, you know, all those things that K2 means in the birth chart. I, I look at it, uh, as, um, the same way, you know, uh, the nodes, I don't use Rashi aspects for this. If I see a planet conjoined in node, then I read it just like I would read in the birth chart. If a planet is conjoined in node, you're trying to develop it or you're moving away from it. Yeah, and uh, because that is a major transit, they're going to deal with that year. And so then it's almost yeah. like Varshafal is like, okay, when we talk about, oh, Rahu's in Cancer right now, um, but we can't say too much until maybe we look at your Varshafal and see how, what house that's kind of relating, um, and, or what house that's falling in, in your Varshafal and then relate that to your birth chart. Um, right, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It definitely does. Um, and then back at that Serena, when I was talking about Serena Williams, she mm -hmm. had K2 in Capricorn with Mars and K2 right. gave the effects of Mars. So it, it was even giving more power for Mars that exalted Mars. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah that, that's the kind of thing that propels people way, you know, far. That, when you see 
all of these. Uh, yeah, you know, you reminded me of that because that um, the one year that really, really big events happened in my life without me really trying to, I had Capricorn um, and I had Mars exalted on the ascendant and it was the year Lord, just like what Serena had. Other things were different, oh, wow. but I had that. And that was a year that I was, I went from being just a random sponsored skater kid who liked all this stuff in one year I, I met someone and they told me to read autobiography of Yogi and all this stuff. But I, I went on good morning America and spoke to Diane Sawyer. A lot of people don't even know this, but I was, oh, wow. I was, I was this kid that got pushed by a cop and this was before smartphones in 2007. And we filmed it cause we were filming a skate video. So we, we turned it into like the, the posting courier and all this stuff and it blew up. It was like a viral video before yeah. cops were shooting people, you know, before smartphones. Um, just something like this was so astonishing. So they ended up flying me to New York City. I did Good Morning America. I did Inside Edition all in a day, blah, blah, blah. Um, the real thing is that I never really could find like enough. The transits showed it so strongly, but like Dasha's did not show it that, it that strongly for how big of an event it was in my life. And it always bugged me. Um, you could see it you just couldn't quite see it as much as I, as I knew it was an event in my life. But then when I looked at the Varsha I was like, good Lord, it's so, yeah. so strong. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that was one of the major things that really, that really made me need to start studying this more, just so you know. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I love it. It works so well. It works amazingly. Yeah, we have to be objective with our charts, you know, and be like, well, did my chart really reflect this major event in my life, you know? And I was always a little bit kind of confused about that event. Yep. Um, these are just, it really shows you wherever those focuses are during the year, whatever that year Lord is, you can plan on it happening. So, um, so it's just a wonderful tool. Yeah, definitely. So, all right. Do you have any uh, other, I don't know, examples or thoughts or ideas you want to share about it? Um, um, well, you know, I just, I have a ton of examples in my course. Yeah. Um, so you don't need to go into all of those. You can look at mine real quick if you want and look at that year. Um, oh yeah, there it is. You You're 20. It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. And Scorpio. Oh my gosh. This is so awesome. Okay. I want to share this. Is it yeah, showing? Yeah. It? yeah. It's, uh, okay. it's not showing it yet. Hold on. All right. I'm going to do this one. Here we go. All right. So. Yeah. You can use me as an example. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but this shows it really well. Even. Yeah. Okay. okay so, do you see it now? Okay. Yeah. I see it. Mars on the ascendant. Yep. Okay, so your month is Scorpio, the 11th house of fame. Okay. That's right, I forgot about that. Being recognized by your peers. Um, uh, and then the moon is the public. Right, and it's the moon. seventh lord in this chart. Yeah. So moon and normally rules. So yeah. you were really in front of the public, right? I mean, the public came to know about you. Yeah. And, um, the moon is normally the planet of the public for you guys a lot. You know, the moon can make one popular or whatever, or have to do with the pull of the masses because it pulls the tides and all that. And so the moon in the 11th that I remember seeing that and being like, goodness, that is so astonishing. And I mean, it was a big deal and it got me really popular. And then what was weird yeah. was that popularity made me weirded out because I have K2 in the eighth and Libra and the Lord in the 11th. So it triggered all these weird little K2 issues in my life. And it got me into spirituality and made me move to the mountains and get, get away from like living in a city and skateboarding. And, but at that time I had reached my pinnacle of my athletic kind of performance of Mars, you know, too, as well as like yeah. a skateboarder. And I'd, been skating and earning the respect of these pros who I'd watched growing up my whole life in videos and then realized, Oh, it's not that cool. I don't, I want to figure out the meaning of life or like I kind of shifted to uh, a spiritual, whatever, Corey. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, it, um, that's so true. You know, you have, um, let's see, you've got your son in the eighth house, oh, yeah. that, the eighth house. See all those changes. Oh. You're a your ascendant lord is Saturn. It's in the eighth house in this chart. So, um, like, okay. Totally changed your attitude and changed your way of thinking about things. And that's what happens. I want to mention too, um, this is something else that I thought of, but I, 
whenever you see the month as the eighth house, or you see the year Lord in the eighth house, mm -hmm. or you see the ascendant Lord in the eighth house, people kind of get scared. You know, mm -hmm. they get a little frightened by that, but you shouldn't be because I see a lot, your status changes in, in some way. Sometimes you become a mother. Sometimes you have a baby. That's what I've noticed a lot um, was like, wow, conception. Like I looked at my mother, all these people, when they had a kid that I knew of, it was the eighth house. So it's like, and that makes sense because it's a big change in your life, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're totally changing who you are. Yeah. Sometimes when you get married, the month is in the eighth. Gotcha. Um, sometimes when you get really famous, the, there's an eighth house connection there because you're going from one state to a totally different state. Gotcha. Being, which is eighth house stuff. So that's also kind of when the mantha is in the ascendant, that's also a, a status change in some way. Gotcha. But, um, but so, yeah, this is great. You know, that you're, there's one more the, thing I just noticed um, is that it's, if the month is Scorpio, that almost shows that it was a Scorpio thing. I got pushed from behind the back by a cop over a bush while I, my friend was filming me skating. And so that's like, I was breaking the law, but it was a, the cop was being a little bit breaking the law too because she just came up from behind and pushed me and that was the theme that the public saw me in so that background of scorpio you know what i mean kind of makes a lot yeah. of sense as well at least for that event and that was the time that i got obsessed with uh like scorpio themes like occult knowledge and spirituality so yeah then if we use the all right what other techniques so you can use it from um reading the transits like you were saying from my natal ascendant so i could read it from pisces yep you can read it from pisces so in this instance again the 11th house because um oh, the, the, yeah. the 11th house and then um the ninth house is that would be from your ascendant that's what the month of would be the ninth oh, house so yeah. that, you know um that's really and, lucky we're getting into more spiritual types of, uh, of, um, you know, you are changing your outlook on things. That's all very ninth house. Yeah. Wow. So, and so and the then you were, you, she pushed you. So I guess you were injured or I don't know, were you or. I mean, not really, but like, yeah, it was just the fact that she did it. The principle, like I was scraped up just barely. So it wasn't like an actual serious injury, but yeah, we would think that the some sixth house connection is probably involved or, or well, okay, well, so just having the year Lord Mars being exalted showed that I handled my enmity really well. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, oh, and because of this event, the city of Charleston basically admitted that they had to build a skate park for us. So even though I'm not, oh, wow. I'm not like, oh, the reason it's there, but I kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, I had a lot to do with that. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe so you influence um, the public quite a bit and yeah. that's that moon in the 11th house and then also in the ninth house from your ascendant and i also kind of shamed the city and so you can see that connection of the leo um the saturn um and sun aspecting each other and there's sort of is that the lord mm -hmm. of the eighth is in the second and the lord of the second is in the eighth and that can kind of show that yeah that and that eighth house theme in leo you know like you were just mentioning earlier because the sun is the authority. And so there's that interchange between sun and Saturn and, and their aspect oh. of each other. And they're within, no, they're not in Ithasala or oh, pretty, um, but they're in Ithasala. Yeah, so they're, okay, wow. That's, that's definitely a part of it too, the Saturn and sun aspect there because government, so skaters are like Saturn, you know, these little like, they're almost like the homeless or they just like these common, you know, people just hanging out in parking lots. And then the sun is like the king or the police and the government. And, um, you know, actually after that event, because I was just a 20 year old kid, like I was skating around and, 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 the, and a cop actually like harassed me uh, because I was skating in front of the street, not knowing I was the kid on Good Morning America. He was like, you guys, you have any idea how much shame you're causing us? You're making us look so bad and all this stuff. And he was like yelling at me, but he didn't realize I was literally the guy who was the kid on the, on the, <laughs> on the news making them look so bad. Um, and so there was a lot of that. There was a lot of controversy, but I luckily skirted around any serious um, danger because of all those lucky things. Yeah. And so Venus is the planet of vehicles. So Venus was exalted. So a major event dealing with vehicles is kind of 
<laughs> definitely. Is definitely. there a Saham that might have to do with that, like vehicles or travel or? Uh, yeah, there's um, horse, the horse Shaham. Oh, yeah. Okay. And um, that's, that's basically vehicles, which that one is Ashva or Ashva. Yeah, okay. That's in Virgo. Let's see. That's in Virgo in your ninth house. Oh, so okay. that's actually, you know, a good, a good position for it. And then the Lord of that aspects and then Venus, the plan of vehicles is aspecting that. Now, Absolutely, now yep. I have Mercury in Pisces at like eight degrees. So the fact that it's in Pisces in that chart, I've noticed that a lot, like significant years for a person, they'll have not just the sun has returned, but they'll have another planet that has sort of returned to where it was in their birth chart. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely, um, you, there's a, you can start looking at conjunctions between the transiting planets for that year to your natal planets. And if it's exact, that is also going to produce a theme for the year. Definitely. Um, okay, cool. Oh, so you, you had, okay, so you said you started, you kind of oh. wanted you got into spirituality this year. Is, yeah. Did you yeah. start reading? Um, Wait, say that again. Sorry, I didn't hear you. you start reading, you know. Yeah, about- this was when I got into astrology, but didn't really get, uh, ex- like, I didn't find Vedic. I, I, I hadn't really gotten into Vedic astrology yet, but this was the year that I got into astrology and spirituality and yoga, and then it led to that. Does that make sense? Okay, um, because your auspicious Shaham, the part of fortune, mm-hmm. it, for this year is in the fourth house of Aries. And the fourth house is all about reading from the past, all the mystics from the past, you know, uh, reading about their experiences. Oh, definitely was like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and trying to get emotionally motivated to follow a spiritual path. That's the beginning of the truth trine, which I'm, this is what I'm writing a book about. But. Oh, no, I know you're talking about, right. Like the, the, the moon, the fourth, the stories, the emotional bond and connection to that. Right. Was, right. Yeah, the past. The, you know, yeah. That was big. The, the tales from the past that we learn from that inspire us um that's the fourth house so that's kind of where your fortune no that was very big for me (laughs) and then the ruler of that sham is in your first house your body so you know um oh and it's also fourth house is vehicle so it's also showing a high exalted action with a vehicle right Um, mm, yeah that's well yeah exactly So now I want to look at Venus. Oh, look, Venus has 15 Harsha points. So that's showing, so that's also um, speaking to me. I was like, uh, yeah, I was just a young kid, but like it was really skating was my life. You know what I mean? And skating is vehicles and conveyances. And I remember one one day in the city when I was there, I did skate like 15 miles or something like a really high amount. So I could see that, that Venus and the high strength there. You know what I mean? Or the the 15 harsha points at least like i was that's all i cared about at that time and then i made a choice at some point in that time of the year yeah you know there's some um, if you get a you have a 15 that is means you were enthusiastic during this year you have a lot more planets that are high in harsha than are low in harsha so it does mean that you were um you know really enthusiastic And like you were kind of saying, like Venus is exalted, Mars is exalted, and Jupiter is in its own sign. So that's showing a high year of, uh, or like you were saying, if you just see a lot of points that are, planets that are exalted and kind of like have those high points, you can see um, this is an important year for you, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, high points. And if planets are exalted in in this chart or in any of the Vargas, like in the Navamsha, if they're exalted, if they're exalted in the Drakana, that'll all show, you know, over here in these divisional charts here. If a planet's in its own hata, right. also really strong, that makes the planet a lot stronger. Yeah, I have not, uh, I haven't examined that stuff enough yet, probably. Yeah. Um, what do you, uh, I guess maybe the Drakana, since it was a big thing where I was kind of expressing and talking on Good Morning America, we might see the Drakana is strong. Um, it looks like Mars is in its own Drekana too, isn't it? Yep. Mars is in its own Trirashi, its own Drekana. Yeah, so it's strong. Very strong. So, Let me see number 40 here. So, no, Mars is in Virgo, but um, 
Oh, Jupiter is in good. Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter is a really strong planet. So luck, you yeah. know, luck pushed you forward. And uh, Jupiter is, you know, higher learning and higher knowledge, astrology. Yeah, I mean, my path really unfolded in a ninth house sort of way that year. It was really fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> looks like a great year for you. You know, this okay, year. well, I wish I could live it again. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, yeah, you're welcome. This yeah. Been- so, like, uh, yeah, this has been really fun having you on. And I just got to tell all the viewers who are watching this, thank you for listening. And I hope you guys check out her course and are interested in solar returns now and all that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add? Oh, just, you know, uh, visit my website. It's at laurabaratastrologer.com. And I'm actually making another course about the moksha houses so um that'll be up soon and um and, and yeah i'm just always you adding you guys always adding. yeah sorry <laughs> i forgot i should have plugged that too because she has a great youtube channel she's been doing a couple series on houses and different things right right now and yes. um, so and yeah what else do you have going on right now um, I've just been, I'm writing this course called The Truth Trine. Um, I'm writing about the Moksha houses nice. and, um, and all of the different planets in those Moksha houses. Nice. Uh, so, um, and how they manifest. And I go through one, conjunctions and um, planets and signs. Wow. So okay. And- I get really detailed with it. And um, I talk about how important this trine is to people like us, people who are spiritual seekers. You know, people are, we, we're involved with this kind of community. So you have a lot of people seeking in this way. Yeah. And this is, it, this is really shows uh, the developmental stages of, of um, you know, being on a spiritual path or... And this is the four, eighth, and twelfth houses for the viewers, right? This is the moksha yes. houses, and they're kind yeah. of you can relate that because the water signs are the moksha signs. It's like the fourth, eighth, and twelfth are like the water signs. Yeah. Yeah, the water houses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then uh, I just want to plug in really quick that okay. I'm also I'm getting I'm doing um, a past life astrology course Great. that I developed um, how you know to see past lives, the manner of death in our past lives oh. if you have a, a partner and you want to see the past life connection with that person i developed a system to show exactly who that person was and what their karma is in uh, your life so, yeah um, i could see <laughs> that making sense like knowing your chart and stuff i could see you being able to do or you studying that and going depth in depth in that um you know what i mean yeah, it's really an epiphany it was like a vision you know it, it came to me so easily and there's um, a lot of stuff we could do with that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so that's cool that you're getting so specific in your areas of research and everything. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, thanks, you guys, for watching. And, yeah, check out Laura's stuff. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good one. Okay, see you later. Bye. Thanks, Laura.